What's going on everybody? Today we are going to be discovering the world of Laplace Transforms. So the purpose of a Laplace Transform is to transform an ordinary differential equation into an algebraic equation uh, which is much easier to solve than an ordinary differential equation. Um, most of the time you'll see Laplace Transforms used in engineering with uh, modeling dynamic systems and that's kind of be going to be what we're going to talk about today so we're going to look at a simple dynamic system that's a mechanical system and we have a mass that's attached to a secure surface uh, with a spring with the constant of k and we're going to want to find out what does this force you how does it affect the position of the mass with respect to time. And the first thing we need to do is we need to write our differential equations. So we need to mathematically model this system so that we can find the Laplace transform to solve it. So we know that we could use that mass times acceleration is equal to the sum of all forces that is acting on this mass. And we can write our differential equation from this. So doing that, we get mass times acceleration. Now we're going to write it different, so it kind of matches how we write differential equations. Is equal to minus kx. So that's going to be the spring constant acting on the mass. And we write this way because springs have a constant that is dependent on how much it moves. So if I have a spring and I pull it here, the more I pull it, the more force it's going to be putting on the mass, which is why we have to multiply it by x. So when x moves more, we're going to have more force on the mass. And then we're going to add our input of u as u. Rewriting this in terms that is more used in uh, dynamic systems. We're going to get that m x double dot plus kx is equal to u. Now what we need to do is we need to find out, and we need to turn this into an equation we can solve. And the way we do that is by using none other than the Laplace transform. But how do we do that? Well, the hard work's been done. Uh, it's been published. There's charts that you can find. Just search Laplace transform, and you'll get a chart that says all the equations that you need to follow to transform your differential equation into a Laplace transform. And I'm going to show it right here on the screen. Uh, so this is kind of what it looks like. And using these equations we're going to get this rewritten as mass going to stay the same because it is a constant and our x double dot is going to turn into what is in the brackets here so we'll have x squared times big x of s minus s times little x of zero minus x dot of zero so all this is, comes from the chart on the Laplace transforms for the second derivative, which is acceleration. And for the x, the k is a constant, so it stays the same. But the little x turns into big X of s. And then the u turns into big U of s. So let's talk a little bit about what is this little x of zero and little x dot of zero. Well, these are starting positions. So it wants to know, you know, where is the position of x at the time zero or when it starts? And then what is the velocity? So we know that x dot, or the first derivative of the position, is velocity. So I also want to know what velocity is at time zero. So for 
this situation, we're going to assume that x sub 0 and x dot of 0, so our position and velocity, is equal to 0. So our system is at rest at t equals 0. Now this is always the case, so if you're working on a problem, it'll normally tell you, you know, what x of 0 is, what x dot of 0 is, or it'll tell you a position that it's at before uh, it starts moving. So knowing that, we can drop out these two terms and then rewrite this equation as m times s squared times big X of s plus k big X of s is equal to u of s. Now what we're wanting to do is we're wanting an equation to be able to solve for the change in position. So we need to isolate our big X of s. So that's going to change, that's going to give us our change of position for the time, or s in this term. Speaking of s, so we start off in a time domain, and what we're doing is we're changing it to an s domain. But what is an s domain? So when we go to s, s is the s plane. Um, it's also called a complex plane in which the Laplace transforms are graphed. So if we factor out the x of s here, we can have x of s times m s squared plus k is equal to big U of s. And then dividing out the m s squared plus k, we get our Laplace transform is equal to big X of s is equal to big U of s divided by m s squared plus k. So you, there you have it. There's our Laplace transform in all its glory, and yeah, that's a Laplace transform.